Welcome, in this lecture we are going to be adding more funness into our game. So we're going to be able to move our heads around, we're going to be able to change the ballistics of our cannon so that we could set perhaps uh, a location for that cannon to hit and we set its launch velocity and let it do some ballistic solving for us like so, so that we can fire things and change the location it's firing at. And we have made it so that the color highlights, uh, again, we're moving the camera this time, and we're gonna find out you know, why we might need to use ray casting instead of doing all this manually and how ray casting can help us out. So exciting stuff, let's dive right into the lecture. So let's play this game and see what exactly doesn't rock when we try and play this. So. The first thing I notice that doesn't rock is that the only feedback we get is in the logs here that we just scored a goal. And also that they're, the colour's a little bit boring. So let's fix those two problems. First off, I want to give the Canon a more of a metallic colour. So I'm going to actually do it in the Canon folder, create a new material, like that, create material. And I'm going to call this Canon because I can. <laughs> I'm terrible. And then what we're going to do is we are going to go and change this albedo to a slight greyish tinge and we're going to make it very metallic and we're going to make it a little bit shinier. Uh, about that sort of shiny because we don't want it too shiny. It is a cannon after all. And I'm going to apply it to both that and the spawner so that the spawner looks like the bottom of our cannon. Okay, so this is looking slightly better. Now, what about these projectiles that we are spewing out of the other end? They probably need to be a certain type of color too, so I'm going to create a material there. I'm going to make them red so that they look dangerous. First, we're going to call this a projectile. And then we're going to change the albedo to bright red. And I'll make them a little bit metallic too, I think, like so. And then to apply it to that prefab, all I have to do is drag it onto the prefab. The view doesn't update immediately, but if I select the prefab, you can see that the preview shows me that it is that color. So now we have our projectiles, which are indeed these little red orbs, which look a bit ostentatious and weird, but that's okay. Now for our hoop. I think our hoop can be a similar metallic color but perhaps we will do it via, well, let's let's try and duplicate this material because we can duplicate materials by using Control D or you can do it by, I think, going into either the edit menu, yes, the edit menu and hitting duplicate. So this is now called Canon 2, but what I really want to rename it to, if it will let me, just slow double click and I'm going to call this one Hoop. And I'm going to move it into the Assets package in fact, I'm going to move it straight into the left pane where there is the hoop. And we've got materials in there, but I don't need that. So I don't know why I've got that. So I'm going to delete that and just leave the hoop there. Ah, it had a material applied already, but we don't particularly care because I'm going to add this new hoop material and make it a lighter albedo. So it's a lighter gray, as it were. Let's hit play. Now the reason this is looking a little bit weird is that the sun is behind our scene, so let's fix that quickly. Select the directional light and let's just rotate it right the way around so that it's illuminating our scene properly. Hit play and there we go. Now we've got more of a cannon look and we have, we're shooting into a more metallic hoop which is fantastic and it looks a lot, lot better. Now the original problem I said was that the goal scored seems to just be doing logs, which is a bit dull, and that's because of the log message we entered. So if we click on goal scored, you'll see that we add this log message, which we no longer need because we're going to do something cooler, which if you see here, it has a highlighter. Now, what on earth is that all about? This isn't properly saving. Sometimes this happens to me. Oh, there we go. And if we take a look at the properties on our goal, you will notice that if I find the correct one, I think the goal scoring trigger, that's the one, we have a highlighter property which is not filled. 
And the highlighter is another script that we have in the hoop, this one here, which I can attach straight to my goal. And what the highlighter does is it takes a highlight material and a highlight time, which means what, material, what color should the hoop turn and for how long. So we can do this. We can select our hoop material. I'm going to duplicate it and rename it to hoop highlighted. And then I am going to make it emissive, actually, because I think that's kind of cool. It's going to look like this kind of thing. And what happens if we apply it to the hoop? Yep, that looks illuminated. So you see I just previewed it by dropping it on the hoop but not letting go. So if we now select our goal and drop the, that into the highlight material property, obviously nothing's going to happen because I haven't connected anything up. But if I select the scoring trigger and then click and drag the goal onto our, onto our highlighter property, then what this automatically does is the goal scoring script will find the goal and find its highlighter component and select highlight when we score a goal. So let's hit play and check that out. So I'm going to try and score a goal. There we go. And when you score a goal for five seconds, the ring illuminates golden and then it stops where after five seconds. And you can obviously edit that by selecting the goal, going to the highlighter. I could make it just highlight for one second. Hit play again. And let's try and score a goal. There we go, highlighted for one second. And I think that's much better. One second seems to work best of all. So next thing that doesn't rock seems to be that we can't actually change the position of this cannon. So we're going to try and fix that. And how are we going to try and fix that? Well, we're going to try and fix that using ray casting. So what's the idea here? There's a point that we want to aim at with our ring. And that's this little red dot that I've added in here. And you've got to see the rest of the setup. We've got our cannon represented by this white object, our camera represented by the camera object, and our yellow hoop over here. Now, what we want to do is calculate the trajectory that goes through that point and set our cannon at that angle so that it goes through the point. Now, fortunately, I've already written a script that allows us to do this. If you go into the cannon, there is a ballistics solver script, which we're going to be using in a bit. And then what we want to do with that is we're going to set that point by looking at it with the camera. So let's do that bit first. To look at it with a camera, what we're going to have to do is raycast, which is basically projecting a point through the look direction of the camera and seeing where it hits. So what we're going to need to do is add in a where it hits bit. So we're going to need to say, OK, let's right click here, create a cube. And I'm going to scale this to create a back pane for our, our camera to be looking at. So that's all scaled out. And then I can position it behind like so and scale it up a bit more and out a bit more. So now when we play, we are shooting at a this backboard. And it also has the added benefit that when we're looking around with our camera, which we can't yet do, then it will be colliding with this backboard. So it will give us a point to aim our cannon at. OK, so this backboard's still not wide enough, it seems. So let's hit play again and just check that out. OK, so that's wide enough but not tall enough. So let's hit play again and check that out. Now it's not quite that's okay. It seems to be more or less right. Okay, scored first time. Brilliant. Now, to move that camera, I have again already written a script for this. If we go to the asset pack and we select aiming, you'll notice there's a head move script. All you have to do is drop this onto the main camera and it will move it using the mouse. But you notice at the moment it's moving it a little bit slowly. So let's go into our main camera and up the sensitivity right up to 100. And now this should be around about right, I think. There we go. Now when you move your mouse, you are looking all around. So what we can do is we could look at the wall over here and we would expect a little point to hit on here. And then the cannon will be 
have its ballistics calculations done appropriately so that we can hit that point. Okay, rather complicated, but let's get started one thing at a time. I'd like to have a go at the you having a go at adding the ballistics calculation this time using the components I've already created. I'd like you to locate the ballistic solver component, the one I showed you before. Remember, you can search in that project view to find components. I'd like you to try it out on the Canon. See if you can figure out what it does. And what doesn't work about this? Uh, why isn't it working nicely? And see if you can create a new root object for the Canon and put the Canon and projectile spawner in it and see, does the solver work now better? So pause the video, have a go, bit of a full challenge, but I'm sure you'll rise to it. Okay, welcome back. Let's give this a shot. So what happens if I go to my Canon and I go and set my Canon, get my ballistic solver and stick it on that Canon object. Okay, so I hit play, I look at my Canon. Oh, it's gone shooting up. That's interesting, isn't it? But notice that the projectile hasn't projectile spawner hasn't moved with it, which means when we spawn projectiles, they just drop to the floor. Also, you can we can try moving these properties of the projectile spawner. So for example, if we move Y and we change its launch velocity, these are the components of our solve. So we're giving it the target location and the launch velocity of the projectile, but again, it's only moving the cannon, so this is pretty useless. So what we want to do is create a new game object. Now, I'm going to create it underneath the cannon in order for that to have the same location and rotation as the cannon. So I'll create empty. I'll move it out. Now, notice it still has the same rotation and position as the cannon. I'm going to rename it to I'm going to rename the cannon to barrel because that's more accurate about what it is. And I'm going to rename this empty game object to cannon itself. Okay, now on the barrel I'm going to remove our ballistic solver because I'm going to be putting it on the cannon instead. I'm going to move this barrel under the cannon, but first what I want to do is actually remove the scale from this cannon because otherwise it's going to scale our projectile solver to a projectile spawner. So if I move the projectile spawner under now, it's not being scaled by the cannon and I can move our barrel under and it retains the scale that it had from before. So now we can just check this out, but we can now rotate the whole cannon and it moves the projectile spawner and barrel. Okay, so one more thing, we need to add the projectile spawner back onto the new cannon object. If we hit play, there we go, the whole thing is rotating together, which means that when we launch the ball, it goes flying into the air <laughs> and it bounces back up because uh, it hits that trigger volume again. Okay, now what happens if I change my launch velocity to about 100? And let's just remind ourselves which directions are the axes. Y is up, Z is along, so I think what we want to be doing is changing our Z axis to be, I think in the positive direction seems to work okay, but something is not quite happy about why I think. So this is just changing the point that we're aiming at. And you can see already this is more fun because we can change our, our point and fire the cannon differently, just at the moment manually, and we will add our ray casting in to the next lecture. So when you are content with all of this content, move on to the quizzes and then to the next lecture. See you there.